This video is about life in the soil, in particular how that life affects plant nutrition. Now our understanding of plant nutrition has changed quite a bit over the last 30 years. Now it used to be believed that the only way a plant could absorb minerals is if they were soluble. Now while that is definitely true, there's a lot more to that story. Plants will put out exudates all along its roots and its surface. An exudate is a substance, it's a combination of sugar, carbohydrates, and proteins. Now you might ask, well, why is the plant doing that? Well, there's two reasons for this. Uh, first of all, uh, that exudate that the plant is emitting is food for bacteria. Now, bacteria can eat non-soluble minerals and bring it into the body at which point it is now soluble. So when protozoa, such as amoebas or flagellates, come in and they eat the bacteria, that food is a little too rich for the protozoa and ends up pooping out nutrients in a soluble form. Nematodes will also eat bacteria. So What's interesting is the plant is in charge. A plant can make the right type of exudates to draw the type of bacteria that it wants. So let's say a plant needs phosphorus. It will make exudates that attract phosphorus solubilizing bacteria. So the plant is in charge of what it wants and its own nutrition. Now there's another way that uh, the exudates benefit the plant. And this is some new science that's coming out. It's quite interesting. Uh, if you look at the work of Dr. James White at Rutgers University, uh, there's something called rhizophagy. And then this situation, what happens is the plant actually takes in the bacteria into the plant itself, it will strip part of the coating off of the bacteria and then readmit or eject that bacteria back into the soil with some sugar exudates in order for it to go back out and regrow the coat that the plant had taken off. So basically, it's almost like the plant is running a dairy almost, as you can call it, where they're feeding and growing the bacteria that it wants in order to eat part of its coat and that way obtain soluble minerals. If you want to find out more about this rhizophagy, I would suggest you listen to this uh, video that he put out. Um, just do a web search on it. Soil microbes and endophytes determine the health and quality of crops. So as you can see, with its use of exudates, the plant is in total control of what nutrients it will take in by just providing the proper food for the proper bacteria according to its needs. Now another way that life in the soil provide nutrients for plants is through the use of mycorrhizal fungi. Now mycorrhizal fungi is a type of fungi that will basically fuse with the plant and become one. So once they've come together, you can consider them one individual organism. The advantage that the mycorrhizal fungi brings to the plant is that the hypha, the body of the fungi, is very small. It can reach out a much greater degree away from the plant than roots and into the much smaller pores that the roots just can't get to. As a result, the available water and nutrients is 10 to 100 times greater than what it would be with just the roots alone. Now there are two main types of mycorrhizal fungi. Those are the endomycorrhizal fungi and the ectomycorrhizal fungi. Now sometimes you will see the endomycorrhizal fungi called AM or arbuscular fungi. Now when the 
mycorrhizal fungi of two separate plants meet in the soil. If they're the same species of mycorrhizal fungi, those fungi will merge into one. And now all of a sudden, you have two plants that are connected that you can consider as a single organism. They share nutrients, they share water. So an example I'm showing here, I'm showing two apple trees. The red represents the mycorrhizal fungi. Now if you take this and you multiply it by hundreds of plants within the soil, just think of the advantages you have. If one area has more moisture than the other, it's all sharing. It's the same with nutrients. This explains why in old growth forests, you'll see young trees that are able to grow up in the shade and eventually get tall enough to produce its own sugar. Is it the reason why it was living is because it was able to obtain sugar from the other plants. Now, about 90% of all plants are endomycorrhizal type plants. They form associations with endomycorrhizal. These would include most of your vegetables and your fruit trees. Another roughly about 9% are ectomycorrhizal. These would include uh, your pines and your oaks. Um, there are some plants that do not form any associations with mycorrhizal fungi. That includes brassicas. Now, there are just a few type of trees that will take both endo and ectomycorrhizal fungi. Now, this list includes the alder, acacia, eucalyptus, tea tree, rowan, poplar, and willow. Now, in our area here in New Mexico, it's mostly the willow and poplar. You know, poplar includes the cottonwood and the silverleaf maple. So in the example I'm showing here, uh, the two trees on the left are those original apple trees I mentioned earlier that joined together because they had the same species of endomycorrhizal coming together. The tree on the far right is a pinion tree. The blue represents the ectomycorrhizal fungi. It only does ecto, so that's why there's only blue coming out of that tree. But the tree in between the pinion and the apple tree is a willow. Willow will take both. It will take ecto and endo. And so in this case, it is tying together the pinion tree and any other pinion trees that attached to that network with the apple tree. So if you're living next to an old growth forest, you might want to consider planting a poplar or a willow so that the mycorrhizal fungi can join together both the old growth forest and your garden and share the nutrients and water that's available. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it gives you some insight into the importance of the life in the soil and how it affects the nutrients of the plants that are growing in it. Work and Beauty is a 501c3 nonprofit based in West Central New Mexico. We operate on donations from people like you. Please consider donating money for our cause by either sending a check to our address listed here or through our website at workinbeauty.org. Thank you very much.